Okay, Perfect. thank you all. Uh, my name is Paolo Patierno. I am uh, one of the engineers in uh, Red Hat working in the messaging team, mostly on the Kafka side. And uh, I am here with uh, Pierluigi and Paolo from Poste Italiane for showing a use case uh, in Poste. Uh, I will have a little bit of introduction around uh, Kafka and uh, how to run uh, Kafka workloads on uh, Kubernetes, so on OpenShift in this case, using uh, the main project that uh, I work on, which is uh, StreamZ. And then uh, Pierluigi and Paolo will introduce their uh, use case in Poste Italiano on using Kafka and even running Kafka on Kubernetes, uh, so on uh, OpenShift, as I mentioned. So uh, a little bit of introduction um, for who knows about Kafka? Kafka is a messaging system, mostly uh, based on the publish subscribe pattern, but it's also a data streaming platform. So they changed the, uh, a little bit the, the definition of Kafka over time. So it started as a messaging system, then a data streaming platform. But at the end, Kafka is a commit log. It's something like you send some messages, and the messages are written inside some file. Now, uh, Kafka is a stateful application. And um, running uh, a stateful application on OpenShift is not so simple. So on one side, we, ha we have uh, uh, some features that uh, Kafka has. Uh, so uh, as a stateful application, uh, every broker in a Kafka cluster has its own identity. Uh, they uh, need to be uh, discoverable, each other. They have to talk each other. And the same uh, is um, for Zookeeper, because uh, for uh, who is using Kafka, a Kafka cluster can work today uh, alongside a Zookeeper ensemble for saving some information around the Kafka topics, uh, the Kafka brokers, uh, and so on. So on one side, there are uh, uh, some features that we need for Kafka. And uh, on the other side, uh, we have something that OpenShift provides us in order to run Kafka on OpenShift itself. Um, because um, uh, we know that uh, some uh, Kubernetes, so OpenShift uh, uh, native uh, resources, like for example, stateful set, we can use them in order to deploy Kafka on uh, OpenShift. We can use config maps and secrets for storing configuration, for storing uh, TLS certificates, for example, or we can use a persistent volume and persistent volume claims for uh, uh, handling the storage of the messages in Kafka and so on. So there are something that are the, 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 the Kafka features that we have on one side and uh, what OpenShift provides us in order to have Kafka running on OpenShift. But uh, there are some challenges and it's not so simple. So as you already, uh, you already saw this morning talking about uh, operators and so on, the best solution for this is having an operator. So instead of having you to create your stateful set, create all the config maps, uh, all the persistent volume claims that you need in order to set up your Kafka cluster running on OpenShift, and then um, you have to update all these YAML files, all these resources in order to update your cluster and so on, you can use the uh, operator coming from this uh, StreamZ project, uh, which since the beginning of September is under the CNCF, so it's a sandbox project. I love to say that it's the way at this time for deploying uh, Kafka on uh, Kubernetes in a cloud native way. So what Streams provides is uh, a bunch of images, uh, Kafka and Zookeeper for running uh, on uh, uh, OpenShift in this case on Kubernetes and um, uh, providing a way for handling uh, for deploying and handling uh, a Kafka cluster in a cloud native way. So it means that uh, uh, you don't have to create um, um, native Kubernetes resources like stateful set pods and deployment, but you have new resources. So when you install the, the StreamZ operator, you have got uh, some custom resources. You have a Kafka resource, a Kafka topic, Kafka users, and so on, that looks like something like this. So you can describe your Kafka cluster as a new kind of resource in uh, uh, Kubernetes. You can specify, for example, the number of replicas, which means the number of brokers that you want in your cluster, the configuration, and uh, how to expose the, the Kafka brokers outside, uh, so 
outside of your uh, OpenShift cluster or even outside of it. And at the same time, uh, you can describe a Kafka topic. So you want to create a Kafka topic, you don't need to use, don't have to use the tools that Kafka provides you for creating topics, but you can uh, interact with Kubernetes using uh, the kubectl command or the OC command if you uh, are on OpenShift. And you can create a new Kafka topic resource uh, with all the information around the topic, so the number of partitions, the replicas, and the configuration. And the same for the user. So if you want to um, define the rights for the consumer and producer uh, applications in order to write and read from specific topics uh, and so on. So you can uh, deploy and handle your Kafka cluster just handling uh, uh, OpenShift resources in this case, which are specific for uh, uh, Kafka. So what you have is this cluster operator, which is watching for this kind of new resources. And when, for example, you deploy your YAML file describing your Kafka cluster, the, 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 mm, the cluster operator takes care of that and creates for you the Zookeeper ensemble. When it's uh, up and running, it deploys the Kafka cluster and then deploying two more uh, operators for handling the topics and the users. So instead of having just uh, one cluster operator in order to focus to one feature, so handling just the Kafka cluster and then to keep our ensemble for handling, for example, topics and user, we prefer to have uh, other different operators for doing that. And uh, on the other side, uh, if you want to update, for example, your cluster, which is something not simple when you use Kafka, for example, on bare metal, because you have to update all the brokers running in uh, all the nodes, you can just uh, update your custom resource. The cluster operator is watching for that. And for example, we start a rolling update on the Zookeeper cluster if you are changing some configuration parameter for Zookeeper or the number uh, or mm, some other uh, uh, information, for example, increasing the number of nodes that you want in uh, Zookeeper, and the same for Kafka. So it takes care of getting the new configuration that you changed or uh, the new number of replicas. You can scale up, scale down, adding or removing nodes from the cluster. And at the same time, then the cluster operator will update, if needed, even uh, the other operators that um, can be configured with some different parameters as well. So uh, we have this cluster operator taking care of everything for you, for creating, updating, uh, and handling, in general, the, the Kafka cluster. These are uh, all the features that we have today uh, in this project. So uh, there are, for example, tolerations uh, and affinities. So you can specify that, for example, your Kafka broker can run on this node but cannot run on this other node, uh, which has some taints uh, and there are no tolerations for that. Or, for example, you want to run um, some Kafka brokers on specific nodes for uh, for networking interface, which are faster than others networking interface. Uh, we handle for you mirroring, for example, the operator handle Kafka Mirror Maker for mirroring a cluster, um, Kafka cluster across data centers, or Kafka Connect for syncing uh, different systems like moving data from one database to another through uh, Kafka for doing, for example, CDC. Or we handle for you Prometheus uh, for getting all the metrics from the brokers, uh, the storage, of course. So these are today all the features that, uh, that um, the StreamZ project provides you in order to easily run uh, Kafka on uh, OpenShift. And at this point, I can uh, hand over to Pierluigi and, uh, and Paolo, who will talk us about uh, their use case around Kafka in Poste and even running on Kubernetes or bare metal. Hi guys, I'm uh, Pierluigi Sforza, solution architect from uh, Poste Italiane. And, uh, this I'm is uh, Paolo Gigante, uh, solution architect of Poste Italiane 2. Okay, here we are. Um, the first part of the presentation, for those who don't know uh, Poste, is a brief presentation of uh, the number we are facing to and the main services that uh, Poste aim to deliver with uh, his digital transformation. Uh, Poste is uh, on the market since uh, 1862, so it has uh, uh, 160 years of uh, uh, history in delivering a letter and uh, packages. 
and uh, the second pillar of the business uh, is the presentation of uh, financial, financial services and uh, loans. Even loans for pet, if you are inter interested, it's a uh, you know, uh, growing market. Uh, the more of this, uh, uh, Poste uh, uh, used to present, uh, to offer digital uh, services uh, to all the public administration, like uh, speed services and uh, is, aimed, is uh, formed by uh, a universe of, uh, uh, of uh, company, of uh, the group that offers services uh, much more complex, mu much complex like uh, mobile services, delivery and so on. Um, here you can see the number that uh, we are facing to uh, digital transform those services we have uh, 8.4 million of uh, financial products uh, sold every year, uh, 135,000 uh, 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 of uh, uh, employees, uh, 13,000 of, uh, 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 of, of postal offices. So, uh, huge, huge, huge number for services. Uh, basically, any of these services has uh, uh, ha an interface uh, a digital, uh, for digital access to those services uh, and uh, all the business line push to the IT to uh, transform uh, their services for uh, product evolution and uh, for regulatory compliance uh, as we will see for PST2. Um, how to afford this big, this big change? Basically, bite after bite. Uh, well, uh, how to afford this uh, change uh, in, uh, with a uh, huge in inertia with uh, all these people and uh, basically an IT that is composed of 2,500 people, bite after bite. Here you can see the first stack that was used uh, to approach DevOps and uh, microservices architecture. Um, Paolo, do you want to get into this? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, nuova semplificazione applicativa uh, is uh, the first project that uh, we have made in the uh, DevOps approach. Uh, so we have uh, the opportunity to introduce uh, OpenShift uh, for the first time of the IT compartment of uh, Poste Italiane. Um, the, the project is uh, an, old, um, an old portal uh, based, uh, compo is composed by five uh, old applications based uh, on uh, Java uh, 1.4 and uh, JBoss uh, 4.2 uh, with an end of cycle middleware. And uh, so uh, we have containerized them and uh, brought them uh, uh, in OpenShift uh, in uh, uh, a lift and shift mode. We have also made, uh, for the first time, the, the pipeline of uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery uh, with Jenkins. Yeah. So, let's see, uh, going over, uh, basically here you can see the architecture just because uh, it's, uh, it was a lift and shift. What, what's most in interesting is the, the second piece of, uh, of this story that is uh, a very complex architecture that rely on uh, uh, Kafka and uh, microservices architecture. Uh, Paul, can you go over? Uh, yes, um, in uh, this architecture we, are, we have the, the opportunity to start from uh, Greenfield, more or less except uh, from uh, some legacy systems. And uh, so we, we make the, um, all of uh, microsystems, uh, microservices uh, container, containerized and uh, works uh, on uh, OpenShift. Uh, so um, we have the opportunity to introduce Kafka. Uh, Kafka, uh, the cluster is composed by five brokers uh, and uh, three zookeeper. Uh, all works uh, in uh, five uh, um, virtual machines uh, on VMware. Um, and uh, we make um, topics uh, partitioned and uh, replicated. Uh, for a study, we have, uh, um, we have made in a certification environment uh, 
uh, we make the, the, the topic uh, partitioned in the on, fi on five uh, um, on multiple of uh, the number of the broker. So, for example, uh, for the topic uh, with a large amount of data, uh, we have made the 20 partitions, uh, and uh, for the minor topic, only five, five partitions. Uh, in that mode, we have uh, no broker in the idle state, uh, as long as uh, uh, the consumers and the producers were scalable uh, in the same way. Okay. Just uh, let me add uh, one stuff. Basically, uh, one view uh, aimed to present uh, static user data that are collected from legacy system, pushed uh, to the components that uh, uh, elaborate them, and see the data to a, a MongoDB cluster to present them uh, as a REST API to consumer. There is an ongoing project uh, that uh, will use the uh, change data capture from mainframe to stream uh, real-time data and provide uh, in real-time to consumer. Uh, this is an ongoing project. Uh, uh, if you are asking if uh, it worked, uh, well, here you can find the number. In the first night, uh, with uh, eight hours of work, so we was able to ingest uh, 500 uh, millions of records. So, compliments to <laughs> to, to the <laughs> to the developers. Okay. Uh, going over, we saw that uh, the application was uh, resilient, the infrastructure was resilient, was uh, uh, performant, and so our mis mm, CIO, Mirko Mischiatti, decided uh, to test it for the core business of, uh, of Post Italiane. We deci he decided to uh, experiment the delivery of a PS2 um, le regulatory compliance on this uh, architecture. And the main, uh, um, uh, the main rails of, uh, uh, of challenges was uh, to be on time for, uh, for the data of, uh, online and uh, give a response time, uh, offer uh, the API on, on internet, so we expect to have uh, uh, a huge uh, uh, grow of, of uh, requests. And uh, we have to do, to do this quickly. So basically, we use the, the same architecture to go in the core of the business of Post Italiane, attaching to the payments uh, gateway. Uh, Paolo, what yes, do you want to say? Um, this architecture uh, is uh, similar from the, the last one. Uh, we have uh, all of uh, microservices uh, on uh, um, OpenJDK and uh, Spring Boot and uh, some uh, interface with uh, legacy systems uh, for payment and uh, to mainframe. Um, the important things of uh, this platform is uh, that we make uh, uh, all entire platform in uh, with the, the three pillars of observability, uh, metrics, logging, and uh, distributed tracing. Uh, so we have made the, um, uh, the guidelines for uh, our developers uh, and uh, so um, they, they can uh, make the applications uh, with uh, the, the standard open metrics and uh, open tracing. Uh, um, so we, have, uh, uh, we, we can avoid the, the vendor uh, lock-in. Another, another important thing is uh, that we make the basis of uh, pull out uh, the informative from uh, mainframe that uh, uh, represent the, the eight percent of all uh, the records um, of the mainframe and uh, bring them to Kafka. Uh, in that case, uh, we we can reduce uh, the load of the mainframe and uh, make the platform uh, scalable and uh, more flexible. Yeah. So going uh, over, uh, here you can see the architecture of uh, the replica for uh, disaster recovery. Uh, Paolo, do you want ah, to yes. um, 
we, have, we make the entire platform uh, disposed uh, in uh, three data centers owned by uh, Poste Italiane. Uh, Roma, uh, Europa, uh, Roma Congressi and Turin. Uh, we make the campus uh, within uh, Roma Europa and uh, Roma Congressi thanks to the short distance and the low network latency. Uh, and uh, we stretched the Kafka cluster and uh, the OpenShift cluster in, uh, within the, the, the SED. Uh, in Turing, we replicated the entire cluster uh, with opportunity tools, uh, and uh, we make the uh, synchronous replica uh, from Rome Europa and uh, Rome Congressi and uh, a synchronous replica of the data uh, from uh, Roma Europa and uh, Turin, Torino. Uh, in this case, we have uh, the entire platform in uh, active active mode. Okay. Uh, the main actor here are um, Mirror Maker to, to replicate data between uh, Rome and Turin for Kafka, uh, the arbiter to replicate data between uh, uh, MongoDB clusters and uh, a custom wrapper switch uh, that uh, has the main uh, uh, the, the main scope uh, to switch in case of disaster for legacy system. And uh, here, uh, this is uh, this is the number uh, of what has been done in less than one year. The for me is impressive. Uh, you may know that I entered in uh, Post Italiana Post Italiane since just uh, two months. Uh, and uh, was very surprising just to collect some data and understand uh, what real was done in less than one year. They, we have uh, actually 15 initiatives in development, developing state that will be will land on the infrastructure you have seen. 13 cluster between enterprise uh, uh, OpenShift and uh, open source OpenShift. Uh, with a production of 1,300 1, 1, cores, three data center, one cloud provider, and uh, that makes developer three, three, <laughs> 350 developers working every day. So it's a very huge, uh, huge number that uh, uh, we have to take in charge. Uh, we have to face out when we understand how to afford change. Uh, uh, digi in, uh, in digital delivery. And uh, basically, I think this uh, was reached by sharing what the, uh, the view, uh, what was the view of the management uh, to the entire IT. Uh, how these uh, uh, intersect with uh, Streamsy? Uh, you have seen we use Kafka in, uh, in uh, bare metal and uh, VMware deployments, but it's, uh, it's very efficient uh, and uh, he can uh, absorb massive uh, 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 cross-up communication. Uh, and it's very resilient, but it's uh, expensive to deliver, to, uh, to scale up uh, and uh, to scale out. So how to simplify this? We are facing uh, uh, some tests with the Streamsy to try to test it so for some use cases for intra-app communication, asynchronous communication. And uh, I hope uh, we will uh, and, and get uh, fast uh, scale out and scale up uh, for uh, asynchronous communication. Uh, tests are currently running, uh, so we hope to show you uh, results at next commons. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Uh, <laughs>